Other people will be coming in when they come in. Does this thing go off? Can y'all hear me? Monitors aren't great, so I can't hear if I'm loud enough. I'm, I need to be louder? Oh, okay. Okay, he's going like that, and I'm like, is, he, is that going to be louder? Uh, yeah, forgive me. I'm a little nervous on this one. Um, I have give a lot of talks. I'll get to that in a second, but uh, this is the first time I've given this talk, and this is the first time I've given anything this complex. So if you lose me, or I lose you more like, um, the slides are all online. You can go to mcduane.com, which is we'll talk about today, actually. And that's where all the slides, everything's the very top link under my session slides and such, which I found out today I shouldn't be using as an H1, um, thanks to Francesca and her lovely talk this morning. Um, anyway, I like doing stuff outside of tech, uh, web comics and comic books are something I'm passionate about personally. Uh, I make a lot of crocheted things. Uh, I actually have a web store, but I'm not gonna tell you where that is. And uh, I love karaoke. If you came to karaoke last night, thank you. If you didn't, well, come next time. It's amazing. Again, I love Twitter. I didn't say that the first time, but if you go to my website, you'll figure that out. Uh, Twitter's my preferred method of communication in the world. I like having public conversations. Um, and in fact, I have this ongoing project this year, and I've talked so much that if someone could get a picture of me in front of this picture and puts this on Twitter, thank you, Marion. Anybody, please. Uh, this would be help me with this project in 2018. This is an ongoing, serious project, folks. And by the end, I'll have to figure out where all the pictures got put. And by the end, I'll figure out where all the pictures got put, and I will make an animated GIF, I promise. All right, I understand that everybody heard that, but uh, that's more for people in the room, the WordPress TV. I work for a company called Pantheon. And I'm gonna end up talking somewhat about Pantheon today because, well, I work there. I get free hosting environments, but you can too. Uh, I also get free hosting um, since I work there, but I think you should look into it for the tool set that I'm about to describe works there very well. It doesn't necessarily need to work there. We just built a really powerful platform that does multiple environments very easily and does things like get feature branching without a lot of thought, and I like that. But I wanna know who you are. I mean, I've been WordCamp Montreal a couple days now. I need to slide down this way to get out of that light just a little bit. But uh, who in the room is a developer? Awesome. This talk really isn't aimed at you, but I'm glad you're here. Who here considers themselves a content editor? Awesome. You're my intended audience. And who here considers himself a copywriter? Ooh. We're going to talk about that. Who here is like a jack of all trades and they just like gluing stuff together? Oh, then you're going to love this talk. You're not my intended audience, but you'll probably get the most out of it. But before we get too far along and I start explaining concepts and drawing charts, uh, I want to show a quick video and I'll talk you through it. There's no sound. So I'm going to show you if YouTube loads it. There's my website and here's my staging environment. They look identical because they are. It's the way it should be. And I'm gonna run this little utility I wrote called Post It Now and I'm gonna feed it a file. Uh, I'm gonna feed it something written in Markdown where it can parse the first line into the title and the rest into the body. Give it permalink. Uh, give it an image to put as the hero or featured image. Give it some alt text. It fails if you don't give it alt text. I think that's important personally. Uh, I give it some terms. It can only pass in slugs but I'm happy with that methodology. And it's gonna go ahead and build this onto my dev environment for me without me having to actually ever touch WP admin. And there's the address for where that actually lives. And then it's gonna run some testing. What you just saw there is behavioral testing. We'll go through it and I'll explain what it just did and what it checked for. But it passed the test, that's the important thing. And now it's gonna build it on my test environment. And there it is. Um, and now I'm running what's called a visual regression test. The machine is going through pixel from pixel from those two pages, dev to test and see, did it pass? In this case, it passed. Nothing broke in my shipment of it from one place to another. So I say, push it live. Yeah, let's go ahead and push it live because this is my actual live environment. I test a lot, so I put a manual stop in. You can configure it to automatically push, but eh, for right now, I'm happy doing it the way it is. Um, and eventually, I sped this up a little bit, but some parts I left real time. And there it is in my live environment. And if my redirects work correctly, when I made this demo, they didn't. I fixed them since, and there on my real live site is this post I just made. Everything unfurled, my YouTubes and whatnot. And don't worry if you're in the room right now going, uh, what just happened? Because <laughs> that's what the rest of this talk is about. For those of you who I have pestered with questions and theories and explanations of what I've been trying to do, that's why I'm super happy to give this talk, is I finally get a chance to, without break, explain what I've been doing. This is what we just saw. 
I took something locally. I could have grabbed it from online. It doesn't really matter where I got it from. But I got content, and I got metadata. And I shoved it onto a development environment. And then I said, hey, we should test that. I'd be behaviorally tested and make sure things worked. I was thinking about into what things actually worked later. Then I pushed it over to a test environment. And I wanted to make sure that the config didn't break between environments. Again, we'll dig into this. And because it all worked, I felt very confident pushing it to my prod environment, my production environment. This shouldn't look foreign to everybody that raised their hand as a developer. This is professional website development from a code perspective. We push it, we test it, we push it again, we test the config again, and we push it to live. Why aren't we doing this with content? And some of you might think, like, that was a stupid, silly blog. Why on earth are you doing this? This is really complicated. Well, yeah, in fact, I do run a little silly blog, a travel blog. Um, everywhere I go, and some of them other random thoughts, end up on the site mcdwayne.com. And it is my home on the internet. I firmly embrace some of the ideals of the indie web, and I believe everyone should too. If you're using WordPress, you're already halfway there. You should own your content. You should own your space on the internet, and you should own your own name, namespaces and ideologies. Mine's in WordPress. Mine lives on Pantheon at the end of the day. But unfortunately, everything I do on the internet comes with a technical debt. It comes with some technical burden and things I just have to do every day. This is one of my favorite web comics in the world, um, catandgirl.com. Uh, this is probably, I have a print of this at home. This is one of my favorite things. It's impossible to read. There's a, if you get the slides, it's in the speaker notes, the link directly to it if you want to study it. But nothing terrible. It's just like, I got to do this, and I got to log in and do that. Now I got to log in and do this, and now I got to fix it this way. Now I got to add meta. Now I got to do this. And it's just 100 little paper cuts. And I said to myself, there's just got to be a better way to accomplish all this. So like with any project, I wrote down some goals. And I said, here's some things that are important to me and what I'm doing. These might not be important to you. And I realize this next section, some of you might say, I don't agree. That's fine. If you're fine living with the 100 paper cuts a day, I don't have any begrudge yet. And again, this is my IndieWeb project. This is my content online. Again, if it's not for you, you can have different opinions. One, I want to write anywhere I want to write. I want to write in the text editor of my choice. The main reasons why are, these three, I use Sublime Text, and uh, the first is Text Wrangler, more than I use anything else, because they work on airplanes. They work when the Wi-Fi goes out on me three times in a session yesterday. It just works. I don't have to think about it. My computer can blow up, literally, and if I've done it right, I can just pull it back from GitHub and be right back to where I left off. Inside of this, a conversation I've been having, and if there's one conversation we can have after this, this is the one I would love to have, is the fact that copy is not content. Copy is a function, a part, an object, an attribute, a something. I don't know the, I don't have the right word for it. Part of content. It can be content, nothing's stopping it, but these are two separate things. And if we go into the world of Gutenberg thinking copy is content, we're gonna have a bad time. We're gonna have a bad time pretty quick. Well, I don't know about you, but last time I typed anything manually into Gutenberg and hit enter, I got a new block. That tells me it's a content editor, not a copy editor. I want to hit a new carriage return, I want a new carriage return. That's how copy works. Again, my opinion. And I want to be able to write completely distraction free. I don't want to know if I'm connected to the internet. I don't want to know the pop-ups that suggest proper spelling and grammar and things as I'm typing. I just want to type and get it out of my head. Editing's for later. We learned this in like second grade. First draft is just ideas. Second draft, you edit it down. This also means I can leverage Git, because everything's just a text file. And now my world gets interesting because I can go git log my history and find out where I inserted ideas. I use this for my personal writing all the time. And I can tell you where an idea came from. I can put things in my git log and from one place I can tell you the evolution of an idea as it goes through time. There's a lot of other tools I'm gonna to talk about. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. But that's the first goal, so let's write locally. Or I wanna write locally. Two, ever since I started using the WPCLI, my function, or one of my goals in life is to never, ever, ever have to log into WP Admin ever again. It's slow, and it's useless now. Because we can do things like this. Yes, this is actually how I made this post. And for you of you who are like, this is a blur, this is literally where this talk came from. 
I was at WordCamp St. Louis explaining this jumble of curl and sed and all of this wonderfulness. And someone said, man, I could just like throw my URL in there. That might work. And I'm like, that's a good idea. So I componentized it up and started working on it. And that leads to the next section. Well, if I'm going to do this repeatedly, I better not have to hand edit this thing every time or, man, I'm going to start messing up really bad. So let's build something that can do this for me and do it repeatedly, reliably, and do it in a way where I can throw it out to the universe. These are all open GitHub repos, more than welcome to go do pull requests. If you can help me fix it, please do. If you have better ideas, please and develop them. If someone walks out of the room and says, I like those ideas, but man, that's a rough version of that, and I could totally build it better, I encourage you to try. I encourage you not to try, but to do. Here's where I started from. And I really want to make a lot less mistakes in production. This, believe it or not, drove a lot of what I've done this whole process. You log in, you start typing in live, you hit print or publish, and then well, you stand there and stare at it and hope you got everything and wait for someone to comment and say, hey, you misspelled this. And if they're nice, they'll do it in private. And if they're not, they will say nasty things. Oh my goodness, your grammar's wrong. But then again, Chris, Chris Lima once uh, said very well in a the talk, there's this magical power in WordPress, and actually most CMSs, that when someone says something nasty in a comment, you can hover your mouse over this one section and hit delete. And you have control over that because, again, it's your web. It's your content. You have power over that. There's nothing rude about deleting a rude comment. But I don't want to do this manually because if I do it manually, I lean over a computer and I stare into a screen and my eyes are just not good after a while. And I think I wrote it right the first time anyway. There's these other tools that can do this programmatically for me. They can just, the things I would visually inspect for, they can visually inspect for. The behavior I expect that I click around for, they can just do that for me if we tell them what to do, because they're machines. So that was it, that was my goals. I didn't sit down and write this list verbatim. I had a very, very different list, but when I refined it down for this talk, this is what it ended up being. These were the things why I chose what I did. And this is what I built. We're not gonna go through everything in detail here. If today you walk out and say, I've never heard of two of these, and you start investigating it, then hooray, we've won. Ideally, we can start thinking all of these things, like everything else on the internet, as a giant pile of tools. If we spend all of our life and all of our time and all of our efforts around just WordPress, then we might as well not go to Jamstack talks. We might as well not even worry about the WP, CL, or the WP oh, I'm sorry, the REST API. We might as well not worry about Gatsby or any of the other amazing JavaScript technologies that are coming along, and let's ignore React because we're ignoring the rest of the known universe when we start ignoring the rest of the tools available to us. Because we don't live on an internet that got us to where we are. We live on an internet that's getting us to where tomorrow is. And I don't know what that looks like. There's devices that haven't been invented yet. If you'd have tried to explain Alexa to me in 2002, I would have said, that's a neat idea, it'll never work. Because Lambda didn't exist. If you try to explain to me uh, VR, I would say, yeah, like in the 1980s movies, it's terrible, and it will we'll probably get there one day. And I just ordered an Oculus Go, because they're that good. Someone showed me one. And that's the world I want to live in. And all it is, is putting the right gear in the right place. And this goes well beyond what I'm showing today, and this goes well beyond what we're doing at this camp. This is the internet in whole. It's just putting the right gear in the right place and tuning it correctly. And if we can step back from what we're doing and say, well, this is what I want to do in the big picture and get out of the framework of, I got to do it in this plugin in this way, or I have to do it in the Gutenberg proper way, and step back and say, well, what am I actually trying to accomplish here? Well, we can accomplish anything. That's the magical beauty of open source. We all know what we're doing a little bit to share enough to build amazing, complex, beautiful things. But I am going to talk about the components that I think are the most exciting. Each of these could be a talk unto itself, and a couple of them are. That will be delivered later this year. First is Markdown. Who here already knows Markdown by heart? All right. Who here knows HTML and the basics of HTML by heart? They could sit there and write an H1 and H2, make an underline, or not an underline, but a bold happen, an italics happen, a strike through, all of that. 
guess what? You already know Markdown. You just don't know the exact specific implementation of it. It takes 20 minutes to learn. But this is what it looks like. You want an H1, you put a hashtag. You want an H2, you put two hashtags. You want an H3, so on and so forth. You want to make a link? Links are stupid simple. Square bracket and um, parentheses. And guess what? Places already use this. Anybody use Reddit? Yeah, you can write in Markdown. Anybody use GitHub, Bitbucket, any of these? OpenStreet, SourceForge? The list keeps growing. Another important technology that uses Markdown, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, there's awesome tools to learn Markdown. There's awesome worksheets and uh, cheat sheets and the Markdown tutorial, which is how I learned it. There's a zillion of these things. The standard hasn't changed a lot in 30 years. It's hardened. It's hardened as much as HTML1 does. It did. WPCLI, and I know some of you were thinking, wasn't this supposed to be a WPCLI talk? None of this works. None of the things I have done today work without the WPCLI. WPCLI allowed me to step away from the admin and stop thinking in a box. WPCLI let me start, think, start thinking about what do the core of WP actually do? What do the internals actually function like? Who knows that they can modify any user role and capability without a plugin? Anybody? Yeah, handful of you. The rest of you, that's the WP uh, roles and cap. Like, it's WordPress WC, WPCLI lets you adjust these things properly in the WordPress proper way. I'm using the post functions. To use that on my hosting provider, I wrapped it in their CLI. I use Terminus, we have our own CLI. No reason you have to. If you are doing this on your own remote boxes, you can just remote with WP. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it today, but it's a function of WP CLI. You can aim it at things and say, do this here and that there. That's a fundamental other aspect. If I need to have a here and a there, which means I need multiple environments. I need to have at least local, at least staging, at least prod. If you don't have that, well, you're writing things to live more or less. If you don't test things between you move them to staging and prod, then you're hoping nothing breaks. Moving at least twice, I think is fundamentally important. Software development's embraced it for a long time. Content editing, I think it's time to come along. Gutenberg, I debated a while on what image to use here, so I used an old tweet from Bridget. Mullenweg said at WordCamp Europe, the most, his favorite feature of Gutenberg coming out was copy-paste a markdown. That's how powerful this is. WordPress, as of now, uses the same underlying things you can use on Reddit and GitHub and a growing list of places. It's the standard, most efficient way to move content around, or I'm sorry, copy around the internet with formatting already attached. HTML is the standard, Markdown's the shorthand to how to write it without having to do a bunch of brackets. Still some brackets. Unfortunately, this says you gotta copy and paste it. So for right now, it's manual, you gotta copy paste in. And again, I never wanna log into WP admin ever again. So I'm not going to ever copy paste into there. Which means there's this technical limitation where we'll soon, soon I'm sure, put it in core, because it's been in WordPress.com for a while. You can go in and click on a button that says accept markdown. There's a plugin that does this still, WP Markdown. And it does uh, essentially this, transform on load. Transform as it pushes it in. So as Gutenberg's receiving this information, between the time you pushed it from whatever repository you're pushing it to Gutenberg, on the way in it transforms into Markdown and then Gutenberg knows what to do with it. And that's mostly true. Um, there's some technical aspects to that, but that's essentially what's happening. We're transforming on rate. And then Gutenberg says, oh, I know exactly what to do with this, hooray. And Gutenberg's awesome for content editing. It really is. Throw a chunk of copy in there and then move pictures around and put clips around and make things bigger and smaller and drop cap, and it's awesome. I personally don't like it for the actual copywriting experience. That's why I'm doing all this in the first place. Then I get to testing. How many people have ever heard of Word Hat in this room? That's more than I thought. Um, this is based on B Hat. Anybody know B Hat? Less people, how's that possible? It's based on B Hat. Um, B Hat means behavioral testing. B Hat is really, really easy to write because it's intended for 
people that aren't technical to write their own tests. It's called the Gherkin language. It's pretty readable. Can anybody tell me what specifically I'm looking for and what text shouldn't match if I'm searching the page based on this feature? Yes, the, specifically the, the, the string dash slash slash twitter.com. That means something didn't unfurl because all the Twitter links I do don't use www. All the Twitter links that I always pull from Twitter are HTTP, HTTPS slash slash twitter.com slash something. Beautifully, Gutenberg accepts raw URL. Another really powerful benefit of it. If you throw it just a raw URL, it probably knows what to do with it. It probably does. If it's Twitter, if it's Facebook feed, if it's uh, Instagram, there's a giant list. It will say, I know what to do with this. I'll make a block, because I know what this is. I'll make a block out of it. So that's how I do Twitter. That's how I do YouTube. That's how I make things. Some behavioral test and say, hey, did this thing actually work the way I wanted it to? Then the other test I run is Backstop. Backstop.js is an open source library that says pixel to pixel is A the same as B. So you can go look at two images and say, hey, is reference and test identical? And this one, the answer is obviously no. Imagine if you had an extra period on one of these. Just down there in the second to last paragraph. You might see it, you might not. This will. Pixel to pixel, is it the same thing? And you might be thinking, yeah, but that's great for plugins and, and giant pieces of code and like, did this update break something? That's what it's intended for. But we've just entered to a world of configuration-dependent content inside of configuration-dependent content. And yeah, the other use cases are great. If someone has turned off a plugin in live and it's a piece of your content dependent on that plugin, yeah, it's going to break. Hopefully, they turned it off in tests, and you can copy and your config over from test, from live to test before you test any of this. Uh, make sure updates don't break anything, and again, great. But who here has ever used, it, used the nested block feature of Gutenberg yet? Has it worked as expected every single time? Yeah, I got a this and a no. Um, that's my worry. When we drop this come October or whenever it drops, when Gutenberg drops, this is going to become a problem that I don't hear a lot of people talking about outside of the high-end publishing end space. I just came from WordCamp for publishers in Chicago. They're talking about this. If you're Dow Jones or if you're uh, the New York Times or uh, someone of that caliber and that large of a publication with those millions and millions of eyes on you, this matters a great deal. That's why they're scared of Gutenberg. Is this going to break a workflow that they had in place for a long time and a testing framework that they've developed over time? Backstop gives us a very quick way. I'll, I'll take questions at the end. Uh, oh, what's the question real quick? Oh. Yep. Yes, Gutenberg is replacing TinyMCE. As of 5.0, TinyMCE will be the classic editor plugin, which you can put in at your leisure, but Gutenberg will be the default experience for all new installs and for every update that doesn't have the classic editor installed. This isn't a call to alarm. I think it's a good thing. But it's something you, we very well need to be aware of in the industry. Who here has clients that they've trained on content editing already? Now's the time to tell them about Gutenberg. Like today, go call them right now, as soon as this talk's done. I'm not joking. The plugin will be in core. The plugin will be the default experience. The plugin won't exist as a plugin anymore. It will be core. That's the plan. Will it actually happen on time? It already is behind schedule. I can't tell you any more details than that. In fact, if anybody can tell me an update on the last <laughs> production schedule of it, I'd love to hear. It's somewhere in the GitHub requests. Anyway, you have this tool, Backstop.js, at your disposal. And you also have this insanely powerful tool inside of your machine right now that can do just about anything you tell it to do. Because there's probably a library or a tool someone wrote that will make it do anything in the known universe. It's called Bash, the Born Again Shell. There was a predecessor was the Born Shell, and they thought it'd be funny to call it the Born Again Shell, and Bash stuck. And this has been a piece of technology that's been around for 40-ish years. Um, the modern version's been around for over 30. And 
if you imagine WordPress is 15 years old, and we've gone from, who's ever seen a WordPress 0.1 site? Yeah, it was, it's called B2. Um, very ugly, very minimal, very blocky. And now we're at about to release Gutenberg, and we're in 2018. Imagine if we had twice as much runway, and you could iterate extremely fast, like faster than you ever could with a GUI. That's what Bash is. For those of you who don't know Bash scripting, for those of you who are already on board, like, I'm sorry, this is boring, but um, Bash will let you do anything. Here I'm just pulling things across the internet. I'm curling this repo that I made, or a little text file I made. It says, hi, WordCamp Montreal. Or I'm saying hi, but it says WordCamp Montreal. Um, it can do anything you tell it to do in a row. That's the comments at the top that explain what it's doing. I don't want to get into the actual Bash programming itself. But it's a script. It's a robot. Robots are amazing at doing very complicated things over and over and over and over and over and over again without fail, without mistake. And if it messes up, there's logs. If it does something out of order, you just go and reorder it. Um, it can do anything we tell it. It can do it extremely fast. And it can do extremely complicated things that take me a half hour to fully explain what I mean and what I'm doing with it. And it can do it in a way that I can actually componentize up and take pieces and chunks and share to the world. And at the heart, I think this is what, what we want to be as plugin and theme developers and WordPress developers in general. We're built on the GPL after all, the GNU public license. Freedom zero is the freedom to inspect the code. I want everyone here to be able to inspect my code. If you want to, you can. That's how we should all feel about our code. And this lets me do it. Bash is a very easy way. Bash is also can let me move from my local into something else. Who here has ever heard of CircleCI or Jenkins and be like, what the heck is that? You can be honest. Awesome. Look at all people. CircleCI is a computer you don't own that can run a Bash script. That is it. There's cron with fancy knobs in it, and there's things you can hook up to GitHub repos. But that's essentially it. It's a computer you don't personally own, somewhere out in the internet, that you can tell it to do things in order, and the way you tell it to do things in order are little config files and Bash. The better you are at Bash, the better you'll be at every other aspect of computer science. So I got to the end, and I built this thing, and it's how I've been posting now for about two months. Adding pieces as I go, adding the testing pieces, which aren't that fully baked yet, to be honest with you. But my use case is very simple. My website, mcduane.com, has a use case of one user, me, in the future. I know that I mostly use this machine, or my phone sometimes, on good Wi-Fi networks. So I've tuned for that. That really doesn't come into play here, but I know that these goals, knowing my end user in mind, will help me get to a world where I can do things very quickly, where I can write in the editor of my choice, where I never have to log into WP Admin ever again. I purposely avoid it, because it's way faster if you don't, by the way. Um, I want to think, make things I can in, extend and reuse and share, and make less mistakes in production, but to put that a different way. At first, I just logged in and I just wrote to live. But things broke on my production side all the time. And unless someone told me, just likely stay that way. And then I thought, wait a minute, there's got to be a better way. And that's why I use CLIs to post all my blog content to my site. And now I test along the way because I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes. I leverage CLIs. I like CLIs. Yeah, yeah. Glory Gainer, everyone. So I'm Dwayne, I work at Pantheon, I like stuff, and I want to have a conversation with y'all. So, with that, thanks. Questions? Over there first. Thank you. Sure. Ah, why is performance an issue with WPCLI sometimes compared to doing it in the database or was the second part? Or directly via bash and direct manipulation of, 
is a performance issue. Um, that's a complex question. The first question back is always, what version of PHP are you on? And what version of WPCLI are you using? If you're on the latest and latest, it's fast, um, in my experience. Uh, I also have a tendency to lag with it because I always wrap it inside of another CLI. That's the beautiful part about CLIs, you can wrap them in each other. So I call Terminus, which is the word, uh, the term, Pantheon CLI, which then calls WPCLI. So I have to wait on that latency, which is a couple seconds. I hate touching a database, just hate it. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna know SQL. I, we live in a world of 20 years of post-SQL at this point, um, of, of no SQL. Um, Cassandra is 14 this year. Um, it's, I don't wanna go step back in time. I realize I'm saying that in the same time I'm saying learn bash, but WPCLI lets me avoid ever having to know how to write to a database. I can never accidentally overwrite my database. If I wanna copy content from stage to live, and I have 15 orders come in, how do I do that with the database without disrupting that live content? WPCLI can build it in over time, and it doesn't affect anything going on in the live environment. So the performance penalty, compared to all of the other stuff I can get myself into by manipulating the database directly, is well worth the time to me. Again, my use case, yes. Uh, if you're migrating 10,000 pieces of content, this is gonna be really slow, and you probably should just overwrite your database at that point. You probably should never write overwrite your live database, though. There's other ways to do that. But um, given that the actual use case is me like giving it a few things and waiting four minutes, I have zero problem with the lag time for, my, again, my use case. Um, if it's faster to log in and do it through the admin, something's wrong somewhere. If you're waiting on screen, either that or you have the fastest screen paints in the history of the world. And I don't know, what you're, everybody's mild differs on everything. So those are just my thoughts. Yeah, you're right. I'll go that way. Mm -hmm. uh, WP Bakery. I do not know. Oh, um, uh, the page builders. How does Gutenberg affect the page builders of the world? Uh, you have to ask the page builders. I don't use them and I don't know. Um, they, I know that most of them have already announced they've adopted and are compliant with Gutenberg. What that means will vary from Baker to WP or Beaver Builder to the, um, I actually don't know the rest off the top of my head. I don't, I don't use them. Um, uh, you'll have to ask your particular of choice. Over there, I had a question. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. The tunability of CLI, that's actually an excellent point. Um, it is, it, the, C, the WPCLI itself is an open standard. 2.0 is about to drop. You can go look at the news on this on GitHub right now. Daniel released it three days ago, or the news of it three days ago. And performance improvements that him and Elaine have been working on will be baked into there. Uh, but I completely forgot about that. Thank you very much. You can config just like you can config Git. You can config anything. Excellent point. Um, other questions? Wow, I got through that way faster than I thought I was going to. Some of the limitations with WPCLI. Some people would say this use case is actually a non-ideal situation to use it in. Um, manipulating content with it um, can get tricky like I showed. If you're doing it by hand, um, like feeding it a line separate as a title separate than a body out of the same doc, can't, it can't do that natively. So I had to build bash around that and certain PHP, piece of PHP. The beautiful part about it is if I do hit a limitation, extending the WPCLI is actually ridiculously easy. Um, it sounds like, oh my goodness, there's all these things I need to build and put it in the right places. But WPCLI itself has a function called scaffold. And there's a function you can put in called scaffold block. And this action will build, I'm sorry, not block, um, build plugin, scaffold plugin, WPCLI scaffold plugin will build WPCLI commands for you. And all you gotta do is drop in the PHP. So if there are limitations, you can simply make it do what you want. The best talk I've seen about WPCLI in the last two years was from Ben at uh, Corner Shop Creative. He gave it at WordCamp Seattle 2017. And it's how their company um, built a theme called Crate and a WPCLI tool called Produce that inserts mustache code throughout their theme. 
So they can modify anything and do completely custom coding in a programmatic way that everyone can get on board with very quickly and they know exactly what gets changed, what doesn't. It's a very standardized way to extend the tool to ex modify to their workflow. I think that's what I missed in all of this is I get very excited about the component pieces to step back and say, I learned so much doing this about the interconnectivity of systems and how everything actually works together. I know so much more about the WP, uh, about the WordPress database schema right now than I did when I started, even though my goal is to never actually touch the database. I know so much more about how plugins are written, even though I've not produced a plugin whatsoever. I know more about the enqueuing system. These aren't bad things. Um, were they practical? I did this in my spare time on nights and weekends, uh, just thinking about it. Uh, it's eaten up a lot of my brain in the last few days. But being able to do all of those things is cool, but it also gave me complete and utter freedom of what I wanted to do. How many people work with editorial workflows where they're tying together like five, six different systems, but they're doing it by hand? We copy paste from, uh, from this system, from um, Google Docs, which is the best thing for uh, collab editing ever, into this other system that's actually just the approval system for internal um, tickets on it. Then we pass it to QA. Then we do these other things. Uh, there was a great talk at Publishers, um, slightly different idea, but uh, Jody and uh, what's her name? Shada from Web Dev Studios were talking about this tool they built, which is reimagining the WP admin as an editorial tool. And let's reskin it, let's rebuild it in React. Um, so you never have to leave WordPress to do all of the pieces. Figure out what the actual workflow is and then mold that workflow into WordPress using the WP editor and let's modify the thing. I disagree in the fact that I think if we treat WPCLI, if we treat WordPress as the be all end all everything and we try to mold everything into it, that's gonna become a headache and chasing our own tail of just trying to modify anything into the WordPress way. Versus we use WordPress for what it really is, which is a CMS, a content management system, and we build things into it and we pull things out of it, it would be a much smarter way to think about it long term, especially in a world where the editor itself is just about to cause a lot of controversy and you're gonna have to retrain clients and you're gonna have to have a lot of conversations about why it's good and why it's bad. If we step back from that and say, no, it's just a repository that keeps metadata around that we can pull from APIs at runtime, then yeah, it goes a lot faster. And we can start thinking about component parts and then things like Gatsby don't seem like threats, they seem like giant benefits to us. That if we don't have to think about the front end anymore, well, we're free to do anything we want. Or we can start thinking about the front end in completely new radical ways that don't exist yet. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, sure. Um, if you go to my slides, uh, mcduane.com, uh, the very first link uh, is the slides for this and the GitHub repos. So go look at the code. If you see something interesting or like I want to change that, suggest that we change it. There's uh, the pull request system. Go edit it, cl click the little button or clone it down, um, make your changes and then push it back up and tell me that you did it. And that's how all software gets made on the internet, man. Um, not all of it, but that's how it's used in GitHub. But I'd be happy to like take issues on it. There's a lot of typos and a lot of um, strong opinions in it. And if you want to use it in production, I will not support you. It's in, it's in the readme. Oh, what's the learning curve for those things? Whew. Um, that's a really hard question because I don't know what the learning curve is of anything because I've already learned it. Um, <laughs> Uh, that, that's it's, it's a weird statement, but it's true. Um, so I was fortunate enough to learn the basics of BHAT as a side effect of what I do for a living is developer relations. So the, the general theory was there, and I understood Gherkin a little bit because it's so darn easy to read. Uh, all my features, which is what you call the individual tests in BHAT, are up on my GitHub. You can look at them. Um, WordHat is a wrapper around that that has presets that you can just like, this line, this line, and this line go together, and I just put in my, I change the variable, and that's it. And that's uh, all the test writing I had to do, like, um, what's the test up here? 
Yeah, the only thing I modified in that whole thing manually was Twitter. That was it. The rest was just like, the rest is a description. Um, that took me probably a week. But the thing that actually got me over the line is if you go back and watch the video at the beginning, you'll see loop Andrew Taylor loop comp demo, um, 2018. I took someone else's work, said, oh, I just need to modify these parts, and I reused the exact same library. But guess what? That is 90 plus percent of software development. Let's stand on the shoulders of giants. I didn't write Linux, so I'm never going to write Linux. I didn't write Mac, but I use it every day. I didn't write Bash. I can extend it all day, but I stand on the shoulders of giants. Word Hat took me a little bit longer. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, and or I'm sorry, Backstop took me. Uh, I'm sorry, Backstop was the one I borrowed someone else's library. Word Hat's the one that I went and installed fresh and had to read like about four tutorials and have a conversation with someone. And I would highly encourage you, if anybody's like, oh, I don't want to do that because I'd be alone and stuck out there, don't. There's a world of people that are willing to help you with this stuff. Um, the support form for this stuff itself, jump into the make.wordpress.org slash, uh, or um, Slack, um, make.wordpress.org slash chat. That is the world of people that make WordPress. And there is somewhere out there in the support forums, there's somewhere out there in the world, someone will say, hey, you should go look over here. This person can help you. They might not be your first person you ask, might not have the answer, but I've never been told no, no one knows that. It's like, they might know, they might know. I don't know, but they probably know, or you should go read this. And read enough stuff, um, depends on how complex the thing you want to do. My use case is pretty simple. B hat took me about two days of thinking about it, again, at nights and weekends, to like get to this point. If I was going to do anything more serious with it, like I'm trying to figure out how to do a spell checker that also semantically figures out if it's the right word, uh, that's a lot more logic, and I'm still not even close to that, but yeah, I'm working on it. What time are we supposed to be out of here? Sorry. 115? Oh, I was going to say, wow. Uh, well, that, that puts us at time then, so we can get to our next thing and take a drink of water before the next thing comes up here. So any other questions? Probably a lot of them. Make.wordpress.org. That is the community for WordPress. That is the where all of core and marketing, and that's the team that I help run, uh, and uh, TV and CLI and all the other parts of the community live. Uh, so you can go there and join the community, join the Slack. But the, there's an awesome Slack that everybody that makes WordPress is in, and it's just make.wordpress.org slash chat, slash chat, because we might not chat, C-H-A-T. Make, that, here, I'll just type it. Make dot, yeah, make dot wordpress dot org slash uh, chat. That, oh no. <laughs> um, uh, that's a different thing. That's a different thing altogether. Uh, that was that's a that's a WP Shoop. Uh, that, that WP Shoop is an extension I wrote for WP CLI to explain how WP CLI works um, that just counts and puts in a loop. So if I stop it, that went through that 862,000 times in the time it took me to go to stop. That's how fast PHP 7 is. Um, but that's not here nor there. Anyway, that's it. Thank you.